Look, just because something new and shiny is always on the horizon, that doesn't mean that you should always wait to get what you need. Long story long though, you should not wait for the A14X iPad Pro to come out if you've got work or entertainment that needs something done today. So uh, why is that? Let's find out. I already slammed this down, so what else can we slam down? And while we're finding out, I'd like to thank today's sponsor, Squarespace. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. Boom, if you have a need now, buy what you need now. Thanks for watching, and let's follow up with that ad read. Right, Gary? <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Yes, that is very good advice, and I give it here all of the time. But if you don't actually know what's out there, or why maybe you should go out and buy today's technology, let's delve into that sentiment a little bit more. That's if, what, what else do we do here if we're not delving into technology sentiments? We already made the counter argument to this video last time where we made the point that, yes, you know, maybe you should wait for the new iPad Pros because there could be some serious technological advances coming to the line in the next few weeks or months at most. And those advancements might be good enough that they are worth waiting for. Here's the rub though. I consider iPads, especially the iPad Pro, to be luxury devices. Now don't get me wrong, I love mine. I've got a lot of work done on this thing. Like I've, I've used this so much, but I could have just as easily have gotten that work done on a Mac or a MacBook. So it's always easy for me to recommend waiting to purchase an iPad Pro. Because frankly, you could indefinitely not buy a luxury item. That's one of the reasons that I don't have a gold-plated bicycle right now. One of the only reasons. How, like, how much trouble do you think I'd be in with my wife if I bought a gold-plated bicycle? But time waits for no person, and that there could be line doesn't help anybody with their clients, projects, schoolworks, or I guess YouTube watching. Look, I watch a lot of YouTube, and sometimes that needs to get done today. The first and biggest reason not to wait is the entire rest of the iPad line exists. You know, all of those other tabs on the Apple website. Personally, I think that when it comes to this round of iPad updates, this isn't going to be like the MacBooks and their M1 chips. This isn't going to be a revolutionary change coming. It's going to be an evolutionary change that, yes, while it could be potentially pretty awesome and aesthetically pleasing, it probably isn't going to be something that inherently changes how tablets exist. But we'll talk more about the potential component updates later. And look, I'm a YouTuber. I always reserve the right to be blown away when I actually get one of the iPads in my hand. To those of us that just need something to work, we've got most of what we already need on the Apple website. So let's quickly peruse that website and break down what is actually available today. That Let's break down what you could buy today and why I think it's worth buying instead of waiting for some future magical tablet Who's gonna, who's gonna do work? I'm not gonna do work if I'm always waiting for a magical tablet. First up, let's talk about the iPad Generation 8. If you want a tablet just for content consumption, this is such an awesome deal. You get a beautiful retina panel, enough storage to keep up with future updates, though probably not enough to actually create anything, and you get a fast enough processor in the A12 that you should be getting those updates for a long time in the future. Plus, if you like to dabble in drawing or graphic design, even this, the lowest end of the iPads is compatible with the Apple Pencil version 1. It's a, I love, the iPad Generation 8 is a fantastic all-in-one device for less than half of the cost of even the lowest end model of the iPad Pro. And could, at the very least, if you needed something today, it could at least get you through until the next Apple event. You can find these on sale quite regularly for under $300. And at that price, you not only get an amazing iPad, but you save enough money that you could get some really sweet accessories if you needed them too. But let's say you are a little more daring, you're a little more of a power user, and you need a little more oomph. There is also what I think is the specific reason not to wait for the A14X iPad Pro, the A14 standard equipped iPad Air 4. Dun, dun, dun. If you were to strip an iPad Pro down to a device that has exactly what you need to get some productivity slash creation slash or office type work done, you would get the iPad Air 4. Fantastic fully laminated display, plenty of power with that A14. Like you get legit laptop levels of power if you do want to do some of the games from the App Store. It doesn't have the best amount of storage. This, maybe this is like a half of a point. It doesn't have the best amount of storage, but at the higher level, you can get a usable amount for small amounts of creation or if you just need some internal storage. 
you get USB-C for better accessory support, plus better data and power transfer speeds. And much like the iPad Pro, you'll get the higher end smart connector on the back, which will allow for things like the ever popular and my favorite accessory ever, the iPad Magic Keyboard. The iPad Air 4, it's basically the iPad Pro minus the ProMotion display, which yeah, ProMotion is great. I love it. I love having smoother refresh rates on screens. That's awesome. But without it, you can actually lower the price of everything else. So is the extra refresh rate worth the extra cost? Not for me. I use Mac, so I get 60 hertz refresh rate anyway. Speaking of that price, you can get the iPad Air 4 for legit deals right now of around $550. <laughs> That's a deal right there. If you need an iPad today, go get this iPad today. We'll wait. We'll, I'm sure there's a link in the description. We'll wait. Go, go, go. Okay, come back. And I would be remiss not to mention that if we widen our aperture a little bit, there are other devices out there that can fill these small portable, quiet, powerful productivity machine. We all know what I'm gonna say. We all know what I'm gonna say. The M1 MacBook Air, it gives you more power, more battery, better keyboard, and you don't have to buy anything else for it to work. So you don't have to buy the Magic Keyboard, it comes with a Magic Keyboard already installed on it. And depending on the version of the iPad Pro that you are looking at, the MacBook Air might be even cheaper or at the very least, it will be the same cost. And much like the rest of the iPads that we've already talked about, you can go buy one today. Kind of hard to beat that. Kind of hard to beat that. I promise. I promise you that I'm not going to argue for the whole video that you should get an M1 MacBook Air. I already made a whole video called that, that you should go get one. But I'm going to continue thinking it really loudly at you. All of those previous options are very well priced. They're very powerful, and thanks to how Apple does software updates and their operating systems, you'll get the full power of iPad OS 14 with no crippling and no software level limitations. You might have hardware limitations like different kind of cameras and other such, but that's a different topic, and when it comes down to like using it for work, it's not as big of a deal. And if you just, if you really wanted to go out and get an iPad Pro without waiting, you could buy the current model or even the 2018 model of the iPad Pro and not miss out on too much either. And those 2018 models can be had for some fire prices anymore. All you'll miss out between the 2020 and the 2018 years in all practical sense is a single GPU core. Oh, and uh, can you see this? You'll also be missing out on a LiDAR camera that nobody uses. I used it once. Okay, I used it twice. I used the measuring app once too. We've talked about all of the other things that you could go out to get and fill the role of this new potential iPad right now. But let's also talk about those component level upgrades and let's see if they, maybe they are gonna be the silver bullet to keep us waiting. I don't follow the up to the minute bleeding edge rumor mill. So here's the things that I am currently aware of that could be included with the new 2021 model. And unfortunately, none of those things are really things that could change enough about the iPad to not just buy something today. Looks like we're mainly gonna be looking at displays and processors. Mini LED screens look like they could provide a very beautiful panel that will have better contrast, much deeper blacks, sharper colors, maybe even better battery life. But the current generation iPad Pro has a beautiful ProMotion display. It also has remarkable contrast and can go up to 600 nits of brightness. Like dang, 120 hertz in a panel that's so bright it routinely breaks my camera's exposure capabilities? What else do we really need? The battery, okay, the battery life thing though, that, that's pretty handy. If Apple can crack the code and give us M1 MacBook Pro 13 levels of battery life in a slimmer iPad, okay, well, that might derail this whole discussion because wow, that would be awesome. Man, that would be awesome. Seriously, think about it. An iPad that can last for 13 or 20 hours, sign me up. Oh, and make it so the battery doesn't sometimes drain so much when plugged into the Magic Keyboard. Okay, thanks. When did this become a pitch meeting for specs for Apple? The next major upgrade could be to the processor, and this could be both kinda awesome or be kinda meh. Like we saw from 2018 to 2020, A12X to A12Z, sure, the A12Z was more powerful, but was it more powerful enough to buy another one? Again, I really love mine, but I don't know that I would recommend somebody move up from their 2018 unless they really needed that very useful LiDAR camera. It's, it's useful guys, it's useful. But I could see an A14X being a substantial upgrade in power if the A12Z can still hold its own pretty well against the A14. Like if we're able to upscale that, that could be very powerful. And if, 
If Apple is able to pair this with awesome battery life, then I could see this being a huge benefit and bring the iPad Pro back to being the king of portable power that it was for the past three years. But if it's only a slight power upgrade and no battery life upgrade, they're, they're gonna have to do something real special in other areas to make up for that deficit. And that's kind of the point, right? We don't know yet which way it's going to go. Leading to, if you have a need now, and it's filled by any of those previous devices that we talked about in the beginning of the video. I assume the video like travels like this. So any of the things we talked about earlier, honestly, it's kind of hard to think of a work need that can't be filled by an M1 MacBook, but could be filled by an updated iPad Pro. Okay, I can't see one niche. If you have some kind of need for the touchscreen, curse you in the touchscreen iPad, you've bested me again. I can't fight with him. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Look, I could keep adding hilarious dad jokes to keep us all entertained all day long. I could do that for a while now to continue to try to pad the length of this video, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna waste all of our time. I am very excited to see what Apple comes out with when they update the iPad Pro. You've heard me, this will be the third time I say this, but I legit love the iPad Pro line and I can't wait to buy and try one out and then report back to you all. But it's just not something that I would wait for if I have needs right now. And I know, I know I sound like a broken record, but if you want to buy a productivity device, get an M1 MacBook. If you need a fast, small, powerful tablet, get the iPad Air. And if you want a cheap way to watch movies without squinting into your small phone because you have a 12 mini and it's very, it's kind of small to watch movies on, that's kind of specific. If you need that, get the iPad Generation 8. Right now, we have the best technology that I've ever seen. And while yes, progress will always march on, it's not always worth waiting for and it's not necessarily worth buying every single refresh cycle. Sometimes it's just better to get what you need now. Thanks to today's sponsor, Squarespace, you can create your own very beautiful website. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a professional website, online store, or portfolio. It's so easy to claim a domain slash URL, create a custom site that matches your style and brings your ideas to life. Head on over to squarespace.com for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head on over to squarespace.com slash everyday dad to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. And thank you for watching.